Hey, good morning, Eastern Oregon, and welcome to this January the 13th version of AM Live on EOA, your connection to Eastern Oregon. Hey, let's so, go. Good. It's uh, Friday before Friday. <laughs> that means it's Thursday, right? Yeah. I, hey, I have to give Eastern Oregon a, a round of applause, our viewers. Okay. They haven't made one stupid comment on the elk video yet. <laughs> I'm surprised. It could happen any. It could happen any minute, I, though. I know. I'm surprised somebody's like, "You shouldn't get that close to wild animals." Yeah, or, or like, or why are you driving and taking a video at the same time? Who's yeah. driving? Yeah, or 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 uh, oh yeah, well, way to go. There's elk in Eastern Oregon. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> like oh, there's snow. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> huh, they're weird. Oh, it's been yeah. like 24 hours without any, any, uh, trolls. Wow. Yeah. That video is kind of like, I don't, I looked at, it's got like it, 277 shares. I just yeah. looked at it. Yeah. It's like almost 10,000 views when I saw it's it. It's crazy. Yesterday. We can work on a piece for like months and yeah, I know technical and sound and put it out there and, 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 and then you can get a video that somebody sent in on their way home from work and it, it's the internet's weird. Yeah, it is. So it's just kind of it's just kind of the way it is. What but it's short and entertaining and unique, yeah. you know. That's kind of that was the first thing I checked this morning. I'm like, have have the trolls hit hit that video yet? No. Nope. <laughs> We're good. We're good. We're doing good there. Yeah. Well, hey, if you're watching uh, on Facebook, be sure and comment and enter into the converse conversation. We'd love to hear from you. And Dana, you know how you're up? doing? Good yep. morning, Dana. So, yeah. So, uh, let's let's take a look outside. I guess see what's let's do it. see. It's kind of like that dismal gray thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, what's not a fan? What's Gabe say it's going to be today? It's going to be showers, isolated flurry, some rain turning into possible snow in the evening. Yeah, high at what forty two today? That's that's all right. I could yeah. deal with that. Yep. And then tomorrow, Friday, looks like it's going to be a little cooler. Yeah, and then it's he says gloom returns. <laughs> that's a good word for it yeah we funny. need to take a new picture of him no that's that's what tanya says every time it's like yeah. oh man we gotta we gotta get a new photo that's gabe the weather kid uh picture that's yep. not gabe the weather man that's yeah gabe the weather kid even though he does have swag in that figure he looks yeah. like he's, he he thinks he's like he, i'm the he, weather man he totally is Ron he totally has upped his game since then though yeah so we need to we need to uh, have him come in and get another video. Me too, Mrs. Chamberlain, for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> it is ridiculous. Yeah. It, I mean, you when know, I, I get old, I hope I'm one of them, uh, you know, state hoppers. What do they call them? Fair, fair weather? Snowbird? Yeah. yeah. A snowbird? Yeah. I, I love yeah, the I don't, here, but I, I hate don't, the winters. Yeah. I don't think you're going to make it. I think that, yeah, you're... You, when you said when you get old, and I'm like, dude, you're over 40. That's yeah, you know, but I mean, when old. I'm old, like your age, <laughs> like when I'm old, <laughs> like when I get up out of the chair. And, oh, oh, no, wait a minute, you make I'm those noises when yet. you groan. Yeah, I don't, I, the only thing that hurts on me is old sports injuries. I, left ankle, I, I, heard, left I heard a I heard a, uh, a comedian once he talks about like it was actually two noises, so it's like. When you get up, uh, and then it's, uh, you reward yourself with the second. <laughs> and you sit hey, down. And, uh, uh, yeah. If April showers bring May flowers. Or, or okay. If April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? Allergies. No, what? Pilgrims. I don't know. Pilgrims. Pilgrims? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, brother. Well, yeah. so anything else? Are there games? Um, Are there some games coming up? Canceled. But 
but their high school games though canceled. So everything's canceled well, for now. Well, the Baker games on Tuesday got canceled. The as of right now, the EOU basketball games against Northwest or against Evergreen. One of the two. They're going to, to Washington. It's the Washington trip this weekend. Evergreen, Northwestern. One of the two is canceled as of now, and I'm assuming probably the other one will be too. I mean, I, there, there's just – we had like six wrestlers at EOU. They wrestled Corbin at Pendleton last night, and EOU's ten times a better team than Corbin, and we lost to Corbin by like 20 points because we had like six guys out. We had to forfeit like five weights. Because they went down to Arizona and everybody got COVID. So, and and explain how team wrestling works. So then the scoring of it. So every so time you dual, forfeit, yeah, yeah, a forfeit, they get they basically get the maximum amount of points. So it, it and we got one forfeit at heavyweight because Corbin doesn't have a heavyweight, but you have to have a wrestler there that's ready to wrestle. So. So we didn't have guy. We don't have guys at 185. We don't have a guy at 195 because they all have COVID. So like our top three out of our top four wrestlers didn't even wrestle last night because they all have COVID. Wow. Yeah, and we we we're ranked in the top 15. Well, it, the rankings came out yesterday. I think we're we're top 15 now, and then we lose to Corbin last night because of COVID. It sucks. And that's how CCC did it this year, though. They said if you forfeit, if 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 you can't compete because of COVID, you forfeit. So this last weekend, basketball wise, the girls, the women's basketball team got two wins because wow. Warner Pack and Multnomah couldn't compete, and then we got two wins too because Warner Pack didn't compete, and then we beat Multnomah on Saturday. The men's, it's it's crazy, man. And then Baker, I I mean, I reached out to some you know, to my contacts and that Baker thing was COVID precautions. I don't think there was any like necessarily, you know, like I don't think it was because people tested positive. I didn't ask any details, but I knew it was because of, I mean, it's just, it's running rampant right now. It's crazy. It is. I hate talking about it too. <laughs> I know. I thought we were I'm done with this. Sick of it. Well, I did yeah. too. And yeah. We and we're this wave of. Yep. We're kind of stuck in the mud. Mm. Yeah. Well, um, let's uh, let's let's do a, a little commercial. And Cindy Williams from the school based CHD school based health center is going to be here with us and talk about that program. And and uh, we'll be right back with you. All right, and we're back. Hey, Cindy, how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you guys this morning? We're doing good. Hey, thanks for coming on with us. I, I kind of sprung this on you. I know yesterday I'm like, hey, can you come on and talk about what you do? And so thanks for being thanks for being a willing victim. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> What's that picture behind you? Uh, that's my uh, volleyball team. I coach the JV team up at LeGrand High School. Oh, you do? My nice. girls from yeah, this year. I was wondering. Yeah. Nice. Well, cool. I was just so, talking with Brianna Schaefer yesterday about the volleyball club. She coaches the 16s. Yeah, uh, Eastern Oregon Volleyball Club. Yeah, I yeah. help with that just a little bit, kind of uh, in the background. Nice. So, because I'm a, one of the high school coaches, I don't usually take a team because um, we're not supposed to coach out of season. So, yeah. I just help with 
logistics background kind of stuff. Cool. So yeah, I'm glad they're doing that. Well, cool. Well, Cindy, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and then kind of how you got involved with this program. So I have actually worked at the school-based health center for about 16 years. So I've been here for a while. Um, I did not grow up in LaGrand. I moved here and went to Eastern, uh, met my husband and his family's from here. So we moved away for a bit and then decided uh, to come back closer to family. So um, I've been here for quite a long time. Both my kids uh, went to school here at LaGrand High School and um, are graduated now, but um, it's a great place to work. Um, every day is a little bit different and it's really nice to be able to help kids out and help them stay in school when they're not feeling good. So, so, so tell us about, so then are you, are you funded by, is this program funded by CHD or the school or both, or kind of talk about the, the relationship and how that works? Sure. So we actually, um, apply for a grant, uh, and our certified school-based health center site through the state of Oregon. So every two years we renew our grant and that uh, money is filtered through our sponsor agency, which is Center for Human Development. So um, that grant requires certain space, um, certain um, staffing. So our staffing, we have at least 10 hours of a nurse practitioner who is available to see students throughout the week. Um, we also have a mental health provider um, who is here and can provide services on site or through um, like webcam, like we're doing right now. Uh, I believe the platform is called MEND. So it's a little different than like a Zoom meeting, but it's kind of the same idea. Um, and then I'm, uh, my position is actually called the health assistant. So I just help with everybody, um, do all the intake stuff, scheduling, charts, scanning papers, keeping things up to date. Um, sometimes if someone sees one of our medical providers and then, um, wants to get hooked up with a counselor, then we facilitate doing that. And so, um, but our space is, we have a really nice space. It's kind of like a medical clinic, um, located on the campus of the school. We've got a waiting area, a couple of different exam rooms. Um, it's all really nice decorated with bright, fun stuff in here. Room 20, right? Room 20? Uh, 22. 20. Oh, You're it says though. room 20 on the brochure. Oh, it does? You might want to <laughs> check that. Hey, I, I, I peeked in there the other day because I talk about it at the uh, during the football games all the time. Yeah. And I've never seen it before. Well, and I was you come going out to do it. a shoot there, and I, like, peeked in there, like, looking around, just kind of seeing what how it was set up. So if well, I have to talk about it, I know more about it, you know. Yeah, I'll check that. We're in room 22. Um, we're not very far from the office where um, our window um, actually looks out into that breezeway that is between the building that the main building where the office is and then the building where the gym is. So we're kind of on the opposite side of the building in the same building as the gym. Uh, it, it's like right if you come down the the hall, like the uh, if you're on the south side of the school or wait, the north side of the school <laughs> and you're coming down towards the gym, it, it's right there on the corner, right? I think so. Yeah, I'm like it, right, right before South, the Spanish but, Hall. Right before yeah, the Spanish I, I, Hall. Spanish Hall, that is correct. Yeah. Right on the end of the Spanish Hall. <clears throat> but we, yeah, we if we need Spanish assistance, we refer to Senor Ronjal. <laughs> Senor Ronjal? Yeah, or Mrs. March. <laughs> yeah, we had, to, we had, when I was in school, we had Mrs. Rodriguez and uh, Senora Ettinger. Yeah. Your husband probably had those same teachers as well. I, she's only a few yes, years older I think uh, Senora Ettinger. She was here actually when still here when I started working at the school based health center. So my I mom was there. there when you started there. Who was I'm, my mom? Oh, really? I'm sure. My mom's Pam. Pam Dodds. Oh, yes, I know Pam. Oh, I yeah. did not put that connection. I'm together. the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know Pam. She's great. <laughs> yeah. And I didn't know who your husband was until I just trolled you on Facebook. Oh, cool. Like literally right now, because I was trying to figure it out. I'm like, she said her husband grew up here. She's got to be close to my age. Like, what? who is it? And I know it's who. He, he was a senior when I was an eighth grader, I think. Okay. 
Not to date you or anything. But. <laughs> well, we didn't say the year, so it's fine. I'm not going to say the year. Nobody needs to know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, so so this kind of sounds like uh, like a really, I mean, because you used to have the school nurse thing, you know, and this is like a, a really expanded, fuller functioning, like a clinic right in the school. Is that, right. I mean, yeah. And and the school district does have um, actually two school nurses right now. Um, Amy Pennington and JC Teeter are the official school district nurses that work for the school district and help with um, all the IEPs, um, any trainings that the teachers need, um, just regular um, stuff like, you know, whatever a school nurse role is. And we're a little, we get confused with the school nurse a little bit, but okay. we can actually do quite a bit more we're a medical clinic in the school. So um, we are separate because we're employed by CHD. Um, the school district um, does kind of in-kind donation of uh, providing us the space, um, internet connection, janitorial heat, you know, that kind of space stuff. But our, we're really operated by the public health team at CHD. So. Um, we can see clients confidentially if we need to, and we do have uh, permission forms that we send home and communicate with families all the time. So um, it is separate from the school, but really accessible to students anytime that they are at school. Yeah. You say that they offer you this stuff in kind, but in reality, like it's a huge advantage for the school to have you guys there. Oh yeah, it, it's really nice because kids can, like if they have a upper respiratory, we they can come and see the nurse practitioner here on site and not have to have a ride to the doctor's office and, and that kind of stuff and can get taken care of. And then if it's appropriate for them to go back to class, they just head back. And if they need to go home, we you know can facilitate that. But the other really cool thing is we can see um, K through 12, K through 12, students regardless of insurance status so if you've yeah. got ohp great if you have private insurance that works too and if you have no insurance um you get the exact same care and same visit so yeah and it says no out-of-pocket costs for students exactly so we if you have insurance we will send a bill and then say your visit was you know 50 dollars visit and your insurance pays 20 dollars. we keep that 20 dollars and put it back in to our program to you know keep us going, and then we write off that other part. That's Every. part of how our grant works is that we're kind of a like a safety net for kids that can't get into their doctor right away or can't see a regular doctor due to insurance barriers. Well, yeah, and sports physicals is huge too, right? Because there's there's sometimes during the year, especially early in early in the school year, where it's really hard to get into a doctor to get a sports physical. Right, it is. And we can do those actually throughout the school year. Um, our nurse practitioner is here um, all day on Thursdays, so she'll be here all day today. And then uh, in the mornings on Friday. So anytime the nurse practitioner is here, we can do those wellness visits, sports physical type things. That's awesome. Yeah. So, and you have another clinic also in Union, is that right? Yes. So we're located inside LeGrand High School. And then we also have a location um, on the campus at Union School, and it's in the, the modular building that's right there near the elementary um, playground, kind of centrally located. It's across the parking lot from the gym area. It's got a big apple on the outside of it. That's like our logo. Where's my logo? There. <laughs> yeah. That's do. But that's on the outside of the building there to help you identify it. And it's the same. They have a nurse practitioner 10 hours a week. Um, they're open Monday through Thursday, and I believe their um, medical provider is there Tuesdays and Wednesdays from nine to two. Mm. So, and then we're currently hiring for a new mental health provider out there. So we want to have another counselor on site, um, but currently those services are available remotely for union kids um, rather than being seen in person on campus. Um, so hopefully we'll get that filled soon. So they'll have their provider there as well. That takes me into the question I had for you. Okay. Um, mental health services, like what kind of give us a little wraparound about that, because like with everything that's gone on in the last couple of years, kids, mental health is like very, very fragile and important right now. 
Right, and so um, we have a counselor on site here at the school. Um, she's 40 hours a week, and so um, you can come in for regular weekly appointments, um, or you can just come in and do a check-in, like I'm having a bad day, bad week um, kind of thing. Um, right now, her um, hours have just shifted, so she's here Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday for her regular clients. Um, she does individual counseling. She can do alcohol and drug or family visits, um, just the whole variety of mental health um, that's available at CHD. Most of those things are also available here. And then on Mondays and Fridays right now, we have um, other providers that are available for kiddos um, if they just need to check in. Um, or we also can connect kids to crisis services if needed or help deal with crisis situations if they happen at school. So very cool. So how many how many kids do you guys service in both of these locations over the course of a year? A guess or a week or a month or I don't yeah, give us an idea of volume. So um it's really hard to put a I mean some days are really busy. We'll see um our mental health provider is booked all the time. She has probably in her eight hour day she sees at least six, maybe seven kiddos during wow. that um, time. So she's been very busy. Um, physical health, it just really depends on the day. Um, we do things, little things like Band-Aids, um, ice packs, that kind of stuff, um, or headaches. A lot of times somebody has a headache, can't focus in class, and they can come in here and grab some crackers and ibuprofen, and then they stay for the rest of the day instead of going home. Um, but we'll see. Um, anywhere from, I mean, five to eight kids a day, sometimes more, sometimes less. It, it varies every day, which is one of the kind of the cool things because you don't really know what your day looks like. Yeah. Sometimes good and sometimes not, but uh, yeah. a lot of variety, a lot of, sometimes it's just kind of a TLC visit. Someone needs to come in and chat for a few minutes, uh, get refocused and we get them sent back to class. So. And then when someone does a remote counseling visit, do you have a computer in a room for them to do that? Or how, how is that accommodated? So we do have an iPad and a room that if they want to log on from here, they can. Mm -hmm. um, they also have, um, it, it's done through email. So the that person can, that person can also choose to mm -hmm. log on um, from their home or mm -hmm. from anywhere that really they have access to their email. So it can be done in in a private setting at home if they, you know, or if they're not at school that day, um, or if they're doing online school, they don't have to drive in for their appointment. Mm -hmm. But we do have a, uh, and it's an iPad that's available here. Yeah. So. Well, very cool. Um, and what what are you guys hoping to expand? What's what are you looking? What's in the future? Where where do you see the program going? So I'm, I'm not, we're not really looking to expand right now. Um, we do a lot of outreach because, um, especially at the high school, our um, our audience or our the people we serve the most changes every year. We've got a class that graduates and a class that comes in, and we really like to get information out because um, sometimes it takes kids a little while to notice that we're here. You know, they might right. not notice us till they see us. But we, we can see uh, middle school kids here. We can also see, um, well, K through 12 at both locations. Um, here at LeGrand, we tend to see mostly high school kiddos just because that's our where we're at. We're right yeah. in the same hallway. Um, but we can we want to get it, that word out there that if there's someone that needs to see a nurse practitioner and is having trouble getting in or has that insurance barrier, we can make their appointment here. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy how far we've it's come because when I was in high school, like there, a I couldn't even tell you who the nurse was. <laughs> B I never went there one time. I didn't even know where the nurse room. I think the nurse room was like down, down like at the very bottom of the school, like down by the gym. But I don't. It, it was. And, down and now there you can go and you can get physicals, you can get mm -hmm. vaccinations, all kinds of stuff. It's so crazy how how far it's come. It's awesome. Yeah, so we do also, yeah, we can do immunizations. We have all the recommended adolescent pediatric uh, vaccinations uh, that we can do here on site. 
Um, so you can get your shot and go back to class, which is what everyone wants to do. <laughs> so how Are you do you being facetious or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you how do you filter out those kids that like, you know, hey, I mean, there's there's a ton of I mean, we were all kids. And it's like, man, I I've got that test coming up or I do not want to go to that class or. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we have that all the time. So yeah. if, if someone comes in and they really don't need something, we'll chat for a couple minutes figure that out and send them on their way. Um, yeah. we, we really don't want people taking advantage of, of using this as you know a way to skip class because we want to be able to be available for the kids that really need something. So we'll say, hey, you gotta, these are your choices, head back, or you know, then you gotta call home if you're really, you know, they, if they're yeah. really not going back and say, oh, we'll just go up to the office. And they're like, well, I'll just head back to class. So. <laughs> So when the nurse practitioner is not there and when the mental health counselor is not there, are you the only one there? Um, sometimes, but that doesn't happen very often. We also have a, a registered nurse who's here on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays. So, so they kind of um, overlap each other. Mm -hmm. So right now we've got um, all services available five days a week. So the nurse can do uh, all the immunizations, the, uh, certain things, understanding orders. She's not able to do like the sports physicals and that kind of stuff. So we schedule those on Thursdays and Fridays, but she can do a lot of other medical assistance. That's cool. Well, very cool. Yeah. Well, anything else that we have missed, Cindy, that you want to share with us about the program? Um, I think we've kind of hit all the high points. Just, uh, yeah, stop by anytime if you guys want to see the office. It's actually a really nice comfortable space. So. Cool. Well, and we need to, uh, we need to work on a video for you guys too. So we'll be talking yeah. more. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm going to get all of our other, um, staff members to be in the video. Cause I okay. invited them to be on TV with me this morning and they and were like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so maybe we can talk them into like a, a cameo and a video. That well, and, or, and we can do this again. I mean, you know, so if there's, if, if, if uh, there's another perspective that you want to cover, we can have them come on the show. So, yep. yep. Well, thank you, Cindy, so much for uh, being here today. Yeah. And, and thanks for what you do. And clearly you, you care about the kids and you enjoy what you're doing and, and thanks for kind of being on the front lines there. All right. Yeah. You guys have a great day. You too. Uh -huh. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Good stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. You learn something new every day. Yep. I, I mean, I knew about, you know, I've obviously done the reads on it for the whole football season. Right. So I kind of knew, but I didn't know how in depth it was like that they did sports physicals right there. You know, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy that they do all that stuff right at the school, man. And when I was in school, you wanted, nobody wanted anything to do with the nurse, man. Like you wanted to stay away from that, that room. <laughs> Why? Because, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 like I said, I can't even, I don't even know who the nurse was for one thing. And then for another thing, I can't even remember exactly what room it was in. Well, and I, and I have no recollection of, I, you know, I went to a big high school in Wyoming. I couldn't tell you where the, that, that, you know, I think part of it is, is, I don't know, you know, when you're an elementary kid, you kind of know, I mean, because nurse is kind of mom, yeah. Yeah. But, but once you get into junior high and high school, it's like, yeah, you, you got to be even know where the nurse is at the junior high either to think of it. Like, yeah, yeah. I have no clue. Yeah. That's weird. I, I never Just, thought about that. Like, uh, I don't know. I kind of had, and I, I mean, for me, like there was this, like, there was this pressure, not, not to be macho, but to be as like, nah, I don't want to go to the nurse. I don't know. There's, the only time I had medical treatment when I was a kid was when I broke something, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I fell out of the back of a truck going 30 <laughs> miles an hour. And out my teeth. <laughs> then I went to the doctor. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, BC, when I went to the high school, they didn't have cell phones yet, obviously. And the way you would call your parents to get a ride home, they had a pay phone, right? Right, right down there by the, uh, by the gym. Uh -huh. And we would just dial the, the collect, you know? Yeah. 
And then in the in the thing, this is this is come pick me up. Call and him they, the collect call. <laughs> And they it's would like decline the, it. We had a baby, it's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, a lot of people used to do that. It was so yeah, when I was in college, that was you would do that. You would this you'd have a collect call, you'd have a collect call for home. Yeah. Uh, come pick me up. Yeah, you have a collect call from home and they would decline it and then they would know to call you back. So, yep, yep, yeah, yeah that, that, that's how we called out from the high school when I was in, in high school, right? Down <laughs> now, now, every kid has a cell phone, like, there, there's no they didn't yeah. even put a phone down there for us to use, isn't that crazy? That's how far it's come nowadays. It would be like some safety concern or something like oh i can't believe you don't have a phone that the kids can use like no you pay you're paying collect if you're calling off of that thing <laughs> or you're seems like, some seems like there is a pay phone though in the in the like the gymnasium entrance of the high school is it still there that's what I i'm think, talking about i yeah, think there I is think but i can't remember it, it no maybe it doesn't it works. Yeah, kids wouldn't even know how to operate it. No, like, and there's no way it works. There's probably no, they probably don't even have any service for it anymore. <laughs> how many I, house phones are there in the grand? Three? The three yeah. people that are over 100 still yeah. have a, a landline? Have you seen or maybe some businesses? Yeah. Have you seen any of the videos of like a, a teacher or somebody will put a, they'll put a rotary phone in a classroom and like, and like, show us how to dial a number you know and they have yeah. no idea well it's uh mrs chamberlain says it's an antique so i would imagine it doesn't work but i've made plenty of of collect calls off of that phone and and told people that i needed to ride yeah i wonder i wonder like percentage wise how many of the calls on that thing were actual money compared to collect i guarantee you it's like 10 to 1 collect to 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 money put in there what does it even cost in a payphone now to make a call? I, I, are there even payphones anymore? I don't know. Every I, payphone box I've ever seen, like in the last five years, has been empty. Like you know, like the Superman, yeah, yeah. You know, like the, the, yeah. And they just there. haven't taken taken the actual thing away. Yeah, yeah. The phone's gone. I I can't imagine that there's even payphones. What's my? Have you and? I mean, so many people have vid have phones that even someone asking to borrow your phone is a strange thing. You know, it's uh, there's a there's a guy there's a guy on YouTube called Big Dogs. I don't know if and you watch him every once in a while. Big and Dos, he, Big Dos, Big Dos. Is that what it is? Yeah, D A W S. Yeah. That's it. That. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I and watch he, him all the time. He's hilarious. yeah, and he he is hilarious, and he will he he will borrow people's phones. And if they give him, if they, if they loan the phone, then he'll, he'll give them a brand new iPhone or something or, like that. Or a stack of a hundreds. He gives. Yeah. I, all I know. I saw him the other day in that thing. He was standing outside panhandling, asking for money. And, and then if, if they, somebody, yep. He would give him a hundred times what they gave. So if yep. they gave a, if they gave him a dollar, he'd give him a hundred bucks back. That was a, that was a funny video. He's with a whole group of people. I can't remember what they're called, but they do all kinds of prank videos. And yeah, they do. They do some crazy stuff, man. They, they, they're, they're like, yeah. They, I've seen him get himself into some sticky situations. Yeah, I have too. But you know, it's it it funny because he really, you can tell the guy has a good heart. I mean, okay. he he likes giving. He likes you know, and it's that's kind of a refreshing. Part I think of. it's a hard line to walk, though, like for me, because like you sometimes I question the authenticity because they're doing it in front of a camera. Yeah, that's that's like one of the hard things. Like you see these people that go around and they tip real generous, generously, but they're doing it for their own benefit because they're putting it on YouTube and they're getting right. views. Yeah. So it's like hard to it's one of those ones for me that's like, eh, I don't know, I, just, you know. Uh, the people that I think are the most generous are the ones that you don't hear about, right? Right. Because they don't they don't need any sort of credit for it at all. Yep. It's crazy. Are we ready to get through the? Sure. Yeah. It's going to be a quick one today. On this day, January thirteenth, nineteen thirty, Mickey Mouse comic strip first appeared. On this day, nineteen forty three, Adolf Hitler declared total war against the Allies. 
On this day in 1962, Chubby Checker's song The Twist, which was credited with starting like the dance craze, The Twist, goes to number one in the charts two years after it first reached number one. So it was at number one in 1960, and then it, it went off the charts, and then it went back to number one in 1962. Wow. On this day in 2016, record Powerball lottery held in America $1.6 billion. $1.6 billion for a lottery ticket. My goodness. And then the number one song on this day is 1962, Chubby Checker, The Twist. One of my favorite songs ever. You know why this is, yeah, you know why this is one of my uh, favorite songs? No. And this is 60 years ago on this day. Um, my, the very first tape that I ever had was the Fat Boys, and they were these rappers. They were a bunch yeah. of big dudes, and they did they remade the song with Chubby Checker. Oh, and really? Chubby Checker and the Fat Boys were doing the twist. Yeah. So I, I mean, that's Chubby Checker was like the twist was my jam when I was a kid. How old was Chubby Checkers when he did that? When he redid the song? Yeah, Gosh, he had to be. I mean, this is probably 1985, yeah. 86. So he had to be in his 50s or 60s, probably. Mm. I would imagine. I, w w how old was he when the twist came out? In his 20s, 30s? He's uh, young. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he looks like he's probably mid-20s. Yeah, something so like he, that. he's probably 50. And and they did a video for it, and Chubby Checker was out there doing the twist. And, yeah, it was, it was cool. How cool will that be? Yeah, it's all so it's been one of my favorite songs. Uh, and then my quote for the day George Washington, the harder the conflict, the greater the triumph. Pretty simple, harder the conflict, the greater the triumph. Boom, good stuff. That's it for Thursday. We'll see you on Tuesday. Yep, thanks, Eastern Oregon.